It's 444RR with the next video on 365 Day Magic Challenge. Got a really great trick today. Um, it's a teacher trick. I'm a teacher. I do this easy magic trick, the uh, vanishing coin. And I'll, you'll see why I put that in parentheses in just a moment. So you uh, go get some props. You're going to need a quarter, a salt or pepper shaker, and some kind of napkin. And go grab those, and we'll be right back. All right. So you got your items, hopefully. So here's, what's, here's what you're going to do. Uh, I'm gonna do the trick first. So I'll teach you how to do it. So you're gonna try to make. I'm gonna try to make the coin vanish without using sleight of hand. Most magicians can do something like where they palm the coin, but I'm gonna try to do it without doing any sneaky sleight of hand magic moves. So I'm gonna cover up the coin, and then I'm gonna cover up the uh, uh, pepper shaker. All right, just like that. So I want you to see that the coin has not vanished yet. It's very important that the uh, that you see the coin has not vanished yet. All I gotta do is snap once. Snap twice makes the trick twice as snappy, and I did something wrong. Oh, that's right, I have to tap. Tap once, tap twice. Wait, that doesn't work. Let me try it one more time. One, two, three. Oh, dang it, I didn't do the trick right. You know what, forget that. Forget that, we'll just forget the whole trick, and we'll vanish the salt shaker instead. There it is, right there underneath the table. And that is the vanishing salt shaker, a great trick. And let me explain how to do it. So you got your coin, your salt shaker, and your uh, napkin. You want to make sure that the coin you're using is not too big because you don't want it to stick from out underneath the salt shaker. If you use a quarter, it's a great size because it fits perfectly right on there. The salt shaker doesn't wobble around because the coin makes it you know, not hit the table flush. You also want to make sure that your napkin, whatever napkin you're using, is not see-through. Don't have it be a see-through napkin. And you want to make sure it completely covers the salt shaker. Now, I'm going to do this from the magician's point of view so you can see how this works. And then I'll do it one time from the, uh, from the regular point of view, from, from like the spectator's point of view. Okay, so here's what you're going to do. What you're going to do is you're going to start off by telling your audience you're going to vanish the coin. Don't say, I'm going to vanish the salt shaker because if you do that, they're going to watch the salt shaker closely. So you want to say, you're going to start off by vanishing the coin. So say, I'm going to vanish the coin. We're going to cover it up just like that. And if your audience asks you why you're covering up the coin, you can always just say to them, because for the magic to happen, I can't have you see the secret. Then you cover up the salt shaker. When you cover up the salt shaker, when you cover it up, you want to make sure you press down on the salt shaker like this. What that does is two things. It covers up the salt shaker completely, and notice that it makes kind of an outline. You can see the salt shaker around the napkin. That's going to be important for when you vanish the salt shaker later on. Let me fold this back up. All right, there we go. So you're going to press down on the, on the napkin to make a little outline of the salt shaker. Now, on the first time, you're going to lift straight up and come all the way back and place the salt shaker, about half the salt shaker, under the table. You're going to say, now watch, the coin is not going to, the coin hasn't vanished yet. Don't draw attention to the napkin or salt shaker. Don't say, I'm going to place the salt shaker down here for a moment. Don't do that. Just casually lift it up and bring it back. And draw all, and quickly, as soon as you lift that up, say, quickly draw your attention to the coin. So go, now see, look, the coin hasn't vanished yet. Okay, you want to bring all your attention here. Okay, so you're going to say, now I'm going to make it vanish. Now you can uh, bring it back down and do whatever you want. You can take uh, one of your utensils at the table like a knife and use it as a magic wand and say, wave the knife like a magic wand. They wave it, and you can do it that way. You can do the snap once, snap twice. Makes a trick twice a snappy joke if you wanted to do that. But anyways, do something. Tap on it, whatever, and say, watch, it's going to vanish. You lift it up and then bring it straight back just like you did before. And you say, it didn't work. Let me try it again. Tap, tap. And then you lift it up again and bring it back under the table. And you say, something, something didn't work here. Let's try it one more time. Tap once, twice, three times. Then you bring the uh, napkin all the way back. This time, you're going to do something a little different than you did before. Once you bring it back, 
you are going to drop the salt shaker into your lap. So you're going to tap once, twice, three times, bring it all the way back, and release your grip on just the salt shaker. Now, it sounds difficult to do, but it's very easy because naturally, your fingertips are curled around the napkin and the inside of your hand is curled around the salt shaker. So release your grip on just the salt shaker and let it fall. Make sure your legs are closed. That way your salt shaker doesn't fall on the table and make a crash. So release your grip just like that and it falls into your lap. Now notice what's happened. There's still that outline of the salt shaker here on the top of the napkin. Notice you can still see the outline of it. That is why when you first do the trick, when you first put the napkin over the salt shaker, you press down on the top of it to get a really nice outline because when you, may, when you drop the salt shaker, the outline will still be present and it still sells the illusion that you, it helps sell the illusion that you still have the salt shaker in your hand. Okay, so, uh, so again, you just dropped it in your hand, boom. And then you're going to say, well, I'm not doing this correctly. Uh, something's not working right here. So you know what? Let's get rid of the salt shaker. Slam it down on the table. Now, depending on what kind of restaurant you're at, you may not want to slam it really hard. You may just want to slam it kind of lightly. So normally when I'm at a big fancy restaurant or at a restaurant where people might stare, well, after I drop it and I push down on it, I do it kind of lightly like boom like that. So that way it doesn't create a loud noise. And then your audience is going to start going crazy because like, wait, where's the salt shaker? And then you're going to lift up to say salt shaker is gone. Now don't just pull it straight up because notice when you pull it straight up, your salt shaker is going to be here. It's not going to come from under the table. You want to scoot the salt shaker under the table and have it underneath the table like this. There we go and bring it around like that. That way it helps sell the illusion that the salt shaker fell completely through the table, not just kind of fell straight down back here. But if you bring it down from down here, it's going to look like that it's fallen exactly where you smacked it on the table and bring it straight up like this. Now, uh, let's do some other things that are going to help sell the illusion. Uh, let me go back to the spectator's point of view here. Okay. So, uh, what you want to do, again, you want to make sure that you get a nice good outline over the salt shaker. A nice good outline. And each time you lift the salt shaker up, don't just lift it straight up and go like this. You want to make sure you bring it back all the way and to the edge of the table like this. Because if you do it this way, where you say, I'm going to make the coin vanish. Okay, so watch the coin. One, two, oh, it didn't work. One, two, oh, it didn't work. One, two, three, oh, wait a minute, that didn't work. It looks suspicious. Like, why on that third time did he go all the way back? If you go back every time you do the, you pick it up and you go straight back, your audience is going to be trained to say, oh, every time he picks it up, he goes back. That way, on the third time, when you drop that salt shaker, it doesn't look suspicious. All right, now, another key point to the trick is you want to make sure that when you do it, uh, you bring it all, I'll do it over here, you bring it halfway down the side of the table like this. Don't have it sitting up like this, high about like, like this, because notice right down here is a little hole, and they might be able to see the salt shaker falling. They might be able to see that. So, what you want to make sure that you do is every time you bring it back, and including when you're ready to vanish it, you're going to bring it so half of that salt shaker is on the underneath the table like this. That way when you drop it, there's no way they could actually see the salt shaker falling. And let me also show you another thing. I talked about uh, reaching under the table and bringing it up and around. Let me show you how that looks. So you vanish it and you say, okay, boom. And then you reach underneath and you bring it around. It helps sell the illusion a little bit more than if you're just, uh, you vanish it and then lift it straight up. It helps sell the illusion more if you actually reach under the table and then bring it around like that. For me, it helps me sell the illusion a little bit more. Uh, again, you can use any coin you want, any salt shaker or pepper shaker that you want. Uh, you just got to make sure that the napkin you're using does not is not see-through. Um, 
I think I might have a see-through silk. Let me see if I have one over here. Um, let me see. Uh, the green one might be see-through. Let me get this out here. Uh, because if it's see-through, the bad thing, if it's see-through like this, which it is, you can kind of see that it's see-through and you can kind of see through it. Uh, when you go to vanish it, your audience is going to see that there's no salt shaker if it's see-through. So make sure that you get a napkin or paper towel or something that's not see-through because if it is, they're going to be able to see when you do that actual change for the, uh, when you actually vanish the salt shaker because it will disappear. So uh, that's the trick. It's the vanishing salt shaker. And this is a really easy magic trick to go out and do. There's no sleight of hand involved with it. You just got to get that uh, vanishing the salt shaker, making it fall. You got to make sure that you uh, practice that a lot because it takes... It takes a couple times to get it so that it's, first of all, falls into your lap and also that it doesn't fall upside down in your lap because that's going to be terrible if it falls upside down and you have salt or pepper all over your pants. Wouldn't be good. Wouldn't be good. And it also takes a little bit of time too because the first few times I practiced this, my, like, when I would go to drop it, my legs would, would like automatically open so the salt shaker would fall on the floor. And you don't want that either because you want to have the reveal of the salt shaker under the table. And second, you don't want to have a loud crash of the salt shaker hitting the floor either because that's going to be bad. And they're going to be like, what was that? So uh, that's the Vanishing Salt Shaker. Really great, easy magic trick. Hope you guys enjoyed. And if you uh, go out and try the trick with your friends or your family and post your success stories, uh, if you go out and actually perform the trick for people and you learn it and go out and do it in a restaurant, let me know how it worked for you and post in the comments below if you actually did the trick. So, hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you tomorrow for the next 365 Day Magic Challenge video.